Hi, this is David with Sherlock Fabrics, and today we're going to take a closer look at the SureCheck 130 tension meter. So as you can see, it comes in this very robust case, super strong, durable. It's something that you're always going to want to have your tension meter live in while you're not using it. Inside the box, you'll notice that we've got a calibration certificate here. This has all your information on it, certificate number, as well as um, the test results from when it was originally calibrated and the serial number of the meter itself. So just hang on to that, keep it inside your box at all times. That'll give us great preference. That information is also on the bottom side of the meter itself. So you can always reference it there as well. So inside the box, we've actually got the, the SureCheck 130 itself. And then we've also got the glass standard that comes along with it. So I'm gonna show you how to make sure that the bezel is set correctly and all that good stuff right now. So as we set it down here, you want to make sure that everything, all the surfaces that are going to be touching um, the glass standard are free of lint, any debris, anything that, any number of things that could be on there. Just make sure that they're nice and smooth and there's nothing uh, interfering. Do the same as well with the glass standard. I've already done that, so just wipe it off. Even small pieces of, of dust and lint can interfere with the reading that you're going to get on there. So once you set it on there, you can see that it, it is very, it's completely normal and it's expected for the meter to rotate about two and a half times total. Um, that's where it's going to zero in. That's the, the spring re, um, preloading rather. And the little black dot where the, where the needle is facing right now, that is the zero mark on this meter. So if you're off a little bit, you can loosen the set screw here on the side. You can turn the bezel to get it to a point. You can see how sensitive it, the needle is there as I'm rotating it around. So getting it perfectly on there is not super critical. Even when you tighten up the screw, it can change it just a little bit, but you want it in that black dot. That's, that's what you're shooting for. Now, if your needle is pointing at rest, other than a spot of 20, if it's way over here at the three or nine o'clock position, that would be a good indicator to send it in and get it recalibrated. You should do that approximately every year anyway. And then also if you set it on the glass standard and it's anywhere out of this seven o'clock range, if you have to take your bezel and really turn it in a direction that's way out of whack somewhere, uh, that would also be a really good indicator that you need to send that in. So we can help you out with that. Go to Sherlock.com for more information on that. So after we're done with the glass standard there, we can take our meter and just pick it up. Setting it down, normally you wouldn't want to set it on the glass standard. We would just simply either set it on its back if you're going to reuse it right away or on an edge. Never want to set it on any surface like this for any length of time or even leave it on a screen for any length of time because it can change the gearing in there and the spring it's not good it's not designed to have it set on there for any length of time it's just short checks and then the best spot to put it of course is just right back in the case or in the padded case so we've taken care of all that i just want to quickly show you on how to read it now if you notice the best tension meters will have a bar on the bottom you might run into some that are a little bit less expensive that will just have a center needle that gives you an average of the tension. What you really want is a bar across the bottom. That's going to read, it's going to pick up the threads in the direction that the bar is the longest. So we saw that the bar is going this way. So it's going to pick up the tension running this way and this way across from left to right of the face of the meter itself. So as we can see there, a little bit hard for me to see, we've got about 39 newtons on the meter and then we're going to rotate it. So I'll just pick it up and you can rotate it to the other direction and we're about 38 little under 38 newtons right there in this direction so this this particular fabric this is where we like to have it really really close within a newton we always try to shoot within two or three newtons of warp and weft direction on the mesh itself but consistency is key and this is a great meter for you to be able to check out that. Make sure you're in all the optimal tensions according to the mesh specs from each mesh manufacturer themselves. For all the tension charts and additional information, you can go to Sherlock.com or give us a shout. We'd be happy to help. Thanks so much.